So after we create an account, we have our own Pinterest. We'll look at the general anatomy of the account, like we did on the other networks, and then we'll start to use it. Again, everything that I'm doing here, I'm recording, so you're able to come back and, and watch these things. If you missed something, you just need to request the link. So at some point you want to send me an email, and I will send you these links. Remember to ask for the social media two lectures, because this is part two. Uh, wherever you're at, just to make sure we're looking at the same thing, if you click on the Pinterest logo at the top left, that'll take you back to your home screen. I believe they officially call it the home feed. So this is where you would see the content of the accounts that you're following. It asked us to follow five topics. So I'm seeing topics, I'm seeing content of the things that I chose to follow. So I've followed five topics. I see those items here. So everyone has, then, a home feed. Everyone that creates a Twitter account. Whoever they've chosen to, uh, to follow, they will see all their stuff. So I'm seeing content. I might see here. I might see a little introductory information. Welcome to your home feed. Click on a pin for a closer look. So that just means that if you, if you hover your mouse over any of these pins, you get a magnifying glass, and if you click on it, it focuses on that pin. So we'll, we'll get back to that, but we can focus on one pin. This is all on the home feed. So when you click the logo, it goes back to the home feed. We have analytics and we have ads. Those are a couple of things that we don't necessarily have on a personal account. As a person, I don't need to promote myself like a business, and I, I don't get the sort of feedback that I would get from a um, uh, from uh, from this kind of account on personal. So, if you take a quick look at analytics, uh, we have overview, profile, and such. If I look at overview, there's not much to look at because it's just it's brand new. With the analytics screen. A little quick info here, metrics, audience, data, improved. So analytics here is how you keep track of what's working and what's not. This would tell me on average daily impressions. Remember we've said the keywords of impressions and conversions. To remind you, impressions. how many times people see your content. And this applies to all the networks. Conversions. How many times people do something with your content. And that's a very broad definition because most of these networks count everything as a conversion, meaning if they clicked to view the pin, if they replied to your pin, if they interacted. Not necessarily the conversion that we most usually care about, which is the ultimate goal, which is like a sale. I would love this to tell me my conversions are 50%, meaning sales, but all of these networks basically can only tell you as much as possible in their network. They can't quite then tell you what happened on your website. If people click the buy button, and that buy button goes back to my website where I have my shopping cart, that's, the, that's as far as Pinterest can, can go. It can't continue to monitor, really, what happens on my website. But these impressions and conversions are information that I see, uh, is information that I see in this network. So impressions, viewers, saves, clicks, and likes are the are the conversions because someone was converted from not saving your pin into someone that saved your pin. A click conversion is just that someone was not didn't click and then they were converted into someone that clicked. And with a brand new account there's nothing interesting to look at yet. It's gonna ask to confirm a website and that's a little bit out of our scope to talk about 
but by confirming our website, we will be able to to have a little verified badge on our on our Pinterest account to show that the the website we have listed on our profile is the official website of this account. And it's a little technical. I won't really go through the steps, but depending on your website, you either need to copy and paste this line of code this block of code here, you need to copy and paste it into your website or you need to upload a unique file to your website. We can't do it really together because everyone's got a different kind of website or no website. One-on-one -on -one we can talk about it, but in general you do want to confirm your website on Pinterest when you can, and one-on-one -on -one we can do that. That was analytics. If you look at ads, well, ads, very obviously here, we know that an ad is a, is a commercial. The ads are boosting your pins, paying to reach more of an audience, like Facebook. You may or may not ever use this. That's fine. The Facebook ad system is, is more effective because it reaches more of an audience. And really, the Facebook ad system is the only one that you really need to engage in or invest in because there's so many people on Facebook to reach that right audience it really helps on Facebook. On Pinterest you don't really have to use it yet. As long as you create the business profile and use it, you should be fine. Um, let's see if I set that to US. I can just leave it as is. I'm not going to really use it. So I'm not going to worry about the ads. It's a whole big system to find your audience. On the top right corner, then we go on to save a website. I mean, uh, the button here, save from a website, upload an image. These are, the, these are the two ways that we can actually share to Pinterest, and we'll get back to that in a moment. Next to that, notifications. If I click there, notifications are information on what has happened in your in your account. If you have a follower, if you have likes and such. So, so far it's just saying ideas for you. I've got a brand new account and so it might recommend ideas of what to share. Eventually this will tell you how who followed you and comment and all of that. Next to that is your, your name. You can create an ad account and so forth. <coughs> and next to that is an icon of your account, my profile. You want to go to your icon on the top right corner and click My Profile. Here's your profile. It's very basic. And this again goes back to what I said last month. You want to set up your profile as completely as possible, as soon as possible, to start to attract followers. So I've said this previously, but I'll reiterate it for Pinterest. Uh, complete your profile as soon as possible. So add your logo, biography, website link if you have one, and then what's unique to Pinterest, create at least three pin boards which we'll do together. and add at least three pins to each pin board. Pin boards are sort of like folders where you can organize your content. It doesn't do you much good if you create seven folders and leave them all empty. People will say, well, why is this account empty? Why isn't there anything to look at? So a good starting point is to create three boards about the topics of your business. 
and in each board we should add at least three pins. We'll do that together in a moment, but that's our basic idea before starting to try to get followers. We had a variation of that on Twitter. I said there, I think, like three to five tweets, and something similar also on Google+, Plus. but in there I mentioned the importance of communities. So here's what we'll do first. Uh, we'll create some boards and all of that first, but what I want to do is edit my profile, because it's pretty bare. If you, uh, if you go to that, it's funny, but most uh, websites, when they want you to go to the settings, the setting is a little uh, gear, and here they're doing a, uh, what is that, a, a, a hex nut or something? So uh, that's your options. Now the problem with being creative is that everyone's used to a gear being settings, and then now like, what is that thing? I don't, I don't even want to click it. I don't know what it does. But that's the settings. If you click there, then here's a spot for you to go to various settings. 